When it comes to healthy living, the kids at St Matthew's Primary don't miss a beat. And now researchers from the University of Melbourne are hoping their recipe for success can be shared with children around Victoria. Backed by a $5 million grant from the Jack Brockoff Foundation, a team from the Melbourne School of Population Health have launched a new program to tackle some of the biggest challenges in child health. The program overall is going to focus on innovative ideas, solutions that come out of children's minds and family ideas and, and the partners that we work with, to come up with ideas that are going to work in a sustainable way into the long future, into the long term, for children and families to improve health and wellbeing. It's a major boost for child health in Victoria. We haven't seen a partnership in a program like this before. In Victoria and around Australia, there's a big gap between the health of children in well-off and disadvantaged communities. I see there being a greater focus in the area of healthy eating and healthy lifestyles. I think that this money means that we can possibly implement new initiatives to help the students, um, not just now, but even in terms of lifelong practice. Children in poorer areas are up to three times more likely to be obese and more likely to experience a serious behavioural or emotional problem. The Jack Brockoff Child Health and Wellbeing Program will work with children and communities in country and city Victoria to help close that gap. What we have is a wonderful research group already with a proven track record by any national and international standard being supported now by philanthropy to do things we, and the expansion that we couldn't otherwise do. So it's track record and the opportunity for wonderful outcomes, real tangible outcomes for the community. One of our hopes in all the things we do is to see some fairly early returns for the community and uh, uh, this Jack Brockoff Foundation clearly promises those early returns. Clinicians who assist people who have suffered a stroke or other similar nervous system conditions will soon have a new tool to help measure their patient's sensory ability. Designed by Dr Kimberly Miller in the Melbourne Physiotherapy School at the University, the Aztex is a Perspex panel with a surface textured to feel progressively smoother toward one end. Hand sensation previously has been tested by some standardised instruments that require a fair bit of time to do and concentration on the part of the individual that you are testing. And in doing a PhD that I was undertaking with people who had recently suffered stroke, we found that those approaches to testing were just too demanding for the individual. People just weren't using it in the clinic. So we developed this device as a really quick and accurate and reliable way to record how well people were feeling things with their fingers, their texture discrimination specifically. The things that we do with our hands are so fine and require things that you just can't um, compensate for with your, with your vision. We really integrate what comes in in terms of what we feel, in terms of how much force and how rough a surface is with how we're going to approach the task of picking up something or manipulating something in our hands. While originally conceived as a tool for measuring touch sensation in stroke sufferers, the Aztex has gone on to be used to evaluate sensory impairments associated with diabetes and has attracted interest from carpal tunnel experts. We've developed a phase two device that is more for research purposes that can test sensation using similar principles anywhere on the body, not just the hand. Such interest has only increased since Dr Miller and the Aztecs won the judges' prize on one episode of the ABC's New Inventors program this year. It was really exciting to get that opportunity to go out there and show it. And as you know, we, we won um, that episode. And really exciting to hear other people's points of view. The PhD has been seen by people who are in the scientific world, but hearing everyday people saying, I can see applications for it in people with hand injuries. The panelists, two of our panelists, and the new inventors had lost part of their fingers and had had to go through the process of retraining this sensation in the areas that had been um, changed by their injuries. And so there, it gave new, uh, new ways of thinking about it. More information on the Aztecs is available in the November edition of Voice. <laughs>